Yeah, caught you, OG. Yeah, caught you, OG. It was like, I didn't really want to drink. Let me uh, knock out this intro. Uh, We Eating presents the free 99 podcast. Be sure to follow us on SoundCloud, iTunes, YouTube, our radio, Spotify, and Instagram. Search FRE99 podcast. Be sure to listen, like, comment, subscribe. Shout out to the sponsors, We Eating, the F4 Clothing Company. That's the F4ClothingCo.com and DVD Productions. Email us, sponsorship inquiries, ASKFree99 at gmail.com. That's ASKFree99 at gmail.com. I'm the good homie Gus Customer Service. Uh, Philly Phil in the building. What up? Mono in the building. Right. Uh, and a very, very, very special guest in the building uh, on this episode 54 to uh, dedicate to who? Fred Warner. Fred Warner. We got Defense. that boy. DJ Juice, DJ yes, Juice, sir. one core DJs, hey! Right on, right on. Thank you for having me. A real OG in the game. So, just 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 so to give, because we'll, I have I have uh, some young listeners, just to give a feedback mm-hmm. uh, or a play by play of DJ Juice, uh, born and raised San Francisco, born and raised San Francisco, yeah, right right here in uh, the nine four one one two. Hey, so I'm in my old neighborhood, literally. Three, hey. three blocks down the street from where I grew up, we're here. Three it's a lovely man. thing. It's yeah, a lovely yeah, thing. Yeah, man. So you didn't get lost on the way here. Then. Not at all. But as soon as you said the address, I was like, shit, I know exactly. As soon as you hit the exit, you were like, know. I'm coasting that's here why, now. That's why I killed the time. I told Gus, <laughs> I said, I'll be there at one boom. I cut it by 15 minutes because I knew my way. Yeah. I knew Easy. the cuts. <laughs> Easy. 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 Um, So I first met you. Oh, where where does this go? I first met you when Jonas hired me f- to promo for Big Boy at the Zebra Lounge. Zebra. Do you remember? Zebra, yeah. You were the DJ. Shit. You were you were the closer that night. Yeah, like, yeah. I think you did like. Shout the Big Boy. Yeah. Shout yeah, to yeah. Big Boy of Outcast. Mm-hmm. You d- uh, you were the DJ that night, and I was like, and I was like one of the promos uh, promo dudes. But I didn't meet you yet, and I was like, yeah. hey. I had to walk over to yeah, the booth yeah. and be all awkward, like, what's up? My name's Gus. I'm, I'm part of We Eating. Yeah, you know? yeah, I, remember, I still got that card, too. <laughs> the, the fork. <laughs> hey, that number didn't change, though. No, no. Real players. Same, my, the same thing with mine. My number is the same for like 20 <laughs> plus years. Four with five in it. Yeah. My number, uh, my number didn't change. Um, you, you were the DJ, but see, you're a rare, it's a rarity that you were a DJ that rocked your own mic. Always. That's what I remember, remember yeah. about going to your parties. Mm-hmm. Um, you were a DJ that that always rocked your own mic, and you've been in the industry. Well, DJing, how many years in the game now? Uh, like professionally, I would consider professionally. I would say early two thousand. Wow. I would say like about ninety nine, two thousand. Mm-hmm. That's when I really was able to support myself off of DJing. Yeah. Like, without having a regular job. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I'm still doing it. I don't have a regular job. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I work for myself. Um, really? That's yeah, yeah, right? I, yeah. I mean, I, I do other things other than DJ because a lot of people get stuck in whatever they start. So if you notice, uh, like a Jay Z, let's say, right? That's mm. the big example, right? He's a rapper, but he just doesn't. He just doesn't rap. He has Rock Aware, mm. Rock Nation. He has other Everything. things that he does. So I'm the same way. I have like multiple things that I have. Streams my, my and fingers. income. Uh, yeah. Not streams, but uh, I got other things that I have. Um, there you go. Like clothing. I have. Um, it's a multi. It's a, a lot. But you know, some of the things are like flipping like, zip. Flipping zip. Yeah, exactly <laughs> that. Not zips, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> flipping other things. Baby packs. <laughs> We got this thirty pack for you now. I'm but. just saying, we're reasonable. You yeah, with, no, come nothing, no, no drugs, okay. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, you know, just flipping shit and just just staying relevant, man. In this, like, I built a lot of uh, connections. Yes, you have. And before my son was born, my son's fifteen now. Before he was born, I was really shout out to the boy, boy. I was hit to the boy, boy. He's in middle, not he's in high school playing shit. football. Knocking, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's almost my height. I'm six thirty, bro. Yeah, man. I'm <laughs> my age. But you know, he keeps me young, though. He keeps me young, right. though. You know, so yeah. So uh, at the time, uh, you know, once I I felt back in the early 2000s that I felt like I, I reached my peak in the Bay mm. I just started kind of branching out to mm-hmm. uh, like LA to start and then I just started making connections and then next thing you know I'm traveling touring and then I did a lot of every award show you could think of I was DJing either the show the pre the pre-party and or after party and then that's how kind of like it came full circle with people in the Bay that weren't 
fucking with me at first. Mm -hmm. They were like, oh, Juice, oh, after. All of a sudden. Oh, I seen you mm -hmm. at the fucking Vibe Awards. I seen you at the uh, Billboard Awards. Mm -hmm. Oh, now you want to. Okay, well, my, my price went up. <laughs> Show them the. <laughs> Flex your resume, my dude. Really though, I mean, like, flex I get, that resume. I mean, the resume is is is, is big, man. It's just uh, yeah. pretty much. I um, well, first of all, me, I'm I'm a music lover, and DJing was just a hobby in this mm -hmm. in this neighborhood. I started, so yeah. I, I had a friend in middle school who had an older brother who was mm -hmm. a DJ. Okay. So back in the late, I'm showing my age now, yeah. back in the late 80s, yeah. <laughs> right, there was a lot of DJ crews. There was. You that know, wasn't that long was, ago. It, that was, was, it wasn't <laughs> long ago. So, you know, you know, I, I had a lot of friends that had the Filipino crews hey. and you had the, the Latin crews and I was cool with everybody, man. Yeah. You know, to me, you know, that's what I love about San Francisco is like, you know, it, it's not, back then it wasn't rare to see a crew and it was like a Filipino dude, a black dude, a Latin dude, a white dude. And that mm. was the click. Yeah, that was and, a and everybody was cool, and it's like everybody kind of knew about each other's culture and respect, and you knew each other's foods and blah 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 blah. So you're not about music. So it's the, exactly so. Me, I, I have friends in every culture, just growing up here. Mm. So from there, I took that, and I was just in love with music, but I never considered DJing like a profession. Word. It was just I kind of fell into that. So I was just just, just for me DJing on the side. I was fine having a nine to five, having a weekend gig, making an extra couple hundred bucks. That was my thing. And then from me doing that, I kind of stumbled into clubs and then it just went into what it is now. So it, it just, you know, it's just I, I didn't force it. It just happened organically, like they say. You inspired at what, me. At what point did you say I'm Fuck the nine to five. It's, um, it's it was cold. probably like in it was in oh one because I got fired from my job. Oh, but by that time I was already making bread, you know, yeah. so I didn't give a fuck. Hey, uh, you probably got fired because you weren't going to work because you were making bread. No, <laughs> it actually, you know, you know what, you know what it was, man. It, it wasn't even that. I was actually going to school, mm -hmm. and that semester, my schedule changed by thirty minutes, so I would get to work fifteen minutes late. It was automatic, right? Yeah, automatic because just the traffic. So then my manager at the time said it was cool. And I was I would start at one to nine. That was my shift, but I would get there at one fifteen, but I will on my time card I would put one. He mm. said it was cool. Then like a couple weeks later, the big boss calls me. He says, Hey man, I'm, I wanna talk to you. Next day I show up to work, she's there with my last check. You're fired. And I'm like, why? And then he gives me a letter saying, On this day, you said you clocked in at one, but you didn't actually show up till and they had it for three different dates. So by that time I was already making hella bread these days. So I said, Fuck it then. I'm like The boss didn't have your back at that she point. She didn't have, he he wasn't even there. Uh, he fucking he he uh he did me she dirty. Waited. Or it was all good. Off. It was all good. So <laughs> then, so after that is when I was like, "Fuck it, I'm going full balls to the wall with my DJ and shit." So, um, what's crazy is I'm from San Francisco, but mm. at the time, nobody in the city was trying to hear me. Nobody was trying to give me a shot. Yeah. So, uh, late like '98, one of my, my shout out to my boy Tony B. He used to do the birthday party, so we we uh, rented out this spot on Van Ness and Vallejo. It's called it used to be called the Arena. Oh, the oh remember that? Oh, and now it's a now it's a bowling Hello. spot now. But yeah. so we rented out that spot, and uh, we, we you know, long story short, you promoted it. We rocked it. It was it was cracking, right? Then uh, it was so cracking that the manager at the spot was like, "Yo, I like how you DJ. I want you to come DJ for me. Mm. Come back next week." So I came back like a week later, rocked it, and like a week or two later, the spot got shut down. Oh, so that was my intro into the club business. Yeah. And then so after that, I was like, all right, let me let me uh go around the city and see what's up. So I, I had mixtapes at the time. So I'm giving out on, mixtapes. On tapes or, or, or on, on, tapes. on CD? On tapes. <laughs> tapes. I had mixtapes at the time. So I'm, I'm going to all the couple of motors and I'm like, yo, like, you know. Real mixtapes. Yeah, shit. I'm, I'm giving a mixtape. I'm like, yo, I'm not trying to force myself onto you. But if you like what you hear, like, holla. rock with me. Yeah. yeah, rock with me. So I was doing that. And a couple of people actually called me back. And then that's kind of how I got started in the Frisco scene. But it wasn't really like uh, consistent. So then by chance in one of these Frisco club, I met this dude that ended up being my business partner at the time. And he was rocking in Oakland. Mm. So then he was like, man, come over to the, to the East Bay, man. It's wide open. Yeah. This is like 99, late 99. So I go over there. All the clubs were in the city. At, at the, the time, at, at the time, time, all the city, the city was on fire in Oakland was popping but it was it was still like anybody's game 
So I go to Oakland. It was because they, they were still headhunting out there. This, yeah. That's Myrtle Capital like era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right? I go, so I go to Oakland, and I'm rocking just like I'm dressed right now. I'm in Oakland like this, wearing my Niner, Niner shit. down, boy. And everybody would look at me. Why are you wearing that shit? I said, I'm from the city, but yeah. Okay, well, you DJ kind of cool, and like, why I can't be from the city? And DJ yeah. cool? <laughs> I can't know the hits. Yeah, I can't. You know, so so I start rocking in Oakland, and that's kind of where I kind of blew up at in Oakland. And in really, the East yeah, Bay gave you the love. East Bay gave me the love. I so, love the East so, Bay so much that people thought I was from Oakland. <laughs> so much because you were there so often. Yeah, I was yeah. there like every week. So I started off doing like uh, all the little in the hole in the wall hood clubs. Yeah. Not even clubs, just like little bars. Did you ever do um, Sweet Jimmy's? Yes, Sweet? hell yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. Sweet. Sweets is my boy. He actually called me the other day. Like I'm still Sweet. cool. With a lot of these people. I, every Oakland club that was legendary in the back in the day, I did. Every single one of them. And then that ended up turning into me coming back to the city. Mm. And then that's when I kind of got accepted. You know what I'm saying? But I went to Sweets once, and I think it was like a Sunday night. And then uh, my brother used to do the Sunday nights. <laughs> shout out to Mo. One. Shout out Mo. One. Yeah. I used to, uh, I, I went there, and there's only three Asians in the room. It was Rick Lee, <laughs> Drew Hef, and me. Uh. <laughs> Drew had a bottle. I think it was like vodka on stage. And um, what's my boy's name for Big Mouth Clothing? Um, oh, I know you're talking about. I can't remember. This. Jay, right? Yes. Jay. And then Drew was on stage. I think Jay was with him. And then they were just pouring tequila or like vodka in people's the girls' mouths. Mouth. Yeah, they, they were yeah, on the stage. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, this oh, yeah. is what? <laughs> yeah, Sweet man. Jimmy's was that, was that. It could go ugly real fast there, right? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah, but yeah, I kind of earned my respect just rocking in Oakland. That's dope, man. And it's kind of like, it was kind of like, kind of like too short. You know, you get in cool with all the drug dealers and all the street dudes. And, you know, then after that led to me with the dude that hired me, I ended up partnering up with him. And mm. then we ended up creating Moonlight Entertainment at the time. What was it called? It was, it was called Moonlight Entertainment. Okay. And I, we did business from 2000 to 2007. So seven solid years. Nice. And um, that's hyphy era. Uh, pre hyphy era, right into the hyphy era. Yeah. So oh seven, like I would say, hyphy era to me was like oh five. Um, like for me, like for me right? being in Oakland, I would say you're right. But I would say for me, my experience, it was like mid oh four to yeah. like mm. to like yeah. to like late oh seven, kind of died out in oh eight. Yeah. That's Hi my. That's me. Hyphy to me was Federation, right? Well. Uh -huh. The uh, hyphy. That, that was it. That was it. And it's funny was, you say that because was that 04? 04. Hi, the original hyphy came out in ninety four. And the reason without E forty. Without E forty. Yeah. No, actually, you know what? It was just E forty. Really? Yeah. The original on the version, Rick Rock beat. Yeah. The original hyphy is just forty, and then when they remix it, they put everybody else on. So the reason I remember it was 04 is because in 04, I was DJing this club called Mingles. Hey. It was one of those legendary cracking ass, you know clubs in oakland that we put on the map and check on the square right yeah exactly so a lot of a lot of up-and-coming rappers will come there with their music like break it in here because if yeah. it works there it it's works good. everywhere so then uh you put a lot of people on a lot a lot yeah yes and, and th that's why I'm, I'm i'm pulling this from you right now <laughs> I'm, I'm appreciating the fluid so so that <laughs> that year 04 i remember that somebody from the federation's camp came to the club with the vinyl because mm -hmm. we're DJing vinyl back then so he comes and he says, yo, look, this is brand new shit. It's, you know, it's produced by Rick Rock. This group is called Federation. Got 40 on it. So I put it on the thing. I listened to it. It was dope. So I said, all right, we're going to debut it right now. Dude was like, all right, let me get, let me get my camera. Let me, let me this record. is like he had to get it. No yeah. phone. Yeah, he, he had, had a camera. camera. He had a camera. Let, let, me get my camera. <laughs> let me get my camera and record this shit. Let so me I get see. my flip. My yeah. flip. Let me get my Motorola razor. I'm going to Walgreens to buy a new cassette because yeah, this yeah. one's full. Nah, this is this is straight like the know, camcorder, camcorder. The camcorder, yeah, exactly. So, so I get on the mic, like you said, I rock my own mic. So I get on the mic, say, "Yo, we got some, Jones. we got some brand new shit straight from fucking 707." Blah blah blah. We debut it, and people were like, "Oh shit, this shit's coming." Mm -hmm. and, and we would play it every week after that, and then and then we would have everybody in Oakland would come through there. Everybody from short all the way down down to the to the you know. Whoever no name rapper trying to get on, and then that mingles. We rock mingles from 03 to 07. And you know what's the trip? Like you think about that time, yeah. Too. Uh, when when I met, uh, I guess it was Goldie, right? When I met Goldie, <laughs> was was uh you ever, you know Gino, right? right? Right. So I was picking up promo work from Gino, and right. then uh, off of Third Street, uh, Gazi had a studio. Mm -hmm. 
and then they were there and i was like oh this, oh, what's up this guy's and then it was like nothing and he, he did he uh he mastered a couple albums for me and to see where the bay is right now with Gazi at that forefront of oh, Empire. Oh, Gazi used to print up all my mixtapes. Dude, he, right? Gazi was Gazi's that my dude. Guy. Gazi's my dude. He was the dude before the dude. He's a, um. <laughs> what people don't know is I have I have a CD. Right? Gazi used to rap. Godzilla. And then he, I, I got this. I got this song that's is Gazi featuring Messi Martin and Be Legit. Wow! Ooh, DJ have, Juice exclusive. I got it. I got it. I don't know if it's exclusive, but I still got it because <laughs> he put it out. But he used to, he used to be a, uh, he used to mix and master for people. Yeah. yeah. So he used to do a lot of be legit shit and, and messy Marvin. He used to have this studio down in the abs. On, that like, yep. On thirty, like I don't even want to say what it's at, but yeah. you know, it's like deep, deep. You know, and um, I used to always meet him over there late night because he used to press up my CDs. And, that, and you know, and you know, we still cool, you know. But now he's the man. He right. I mean, <laughs> he, he was it was a, he was a man back then, but now he got this. He's the man. man. He got the empire at empire. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of yeah. like when yeah. I see that pop, and I was like, look at Gazi. Yeah, yeah, he did that shit. He did look that shit. Look at Gazi, boy. Yeah, and it's all it's a trip. How many people like if in the last twenty years that have come from the Bay? Where are they at now? You know what I mean? It's it's like it's good to see, but. People still don't give us our props outside of this area, but Never. true. We still got to push. We we always the underdogs though. Always. Except when it comes to sports. Mm. Even that. Yeah. Hey, we had a good yeah, decade true. though, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though Niners didn't win the Super Bowl 2012, you think about it. The Warriors won three. Giants won three. The uh, Niners had those three good years. Yeah. It's real Frisco love. Yeah, real Frisco <laughs> love, hey man. You know, shit. it's real Frisco love. Yeah. So now we 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 and I, we're back. We're looking like Ooh. we might take it. Hopefully, do a quick intro on what you and uh, the good homie DJ Mo One do, yeah. and then the, the rest of the Empire out there. Oh yeah. So we um we partnered up with the Niner Empire and you know shout the Niner Empire. Check them out NinerEmpire.com and um they have. I want to say it's like 300 chapters worldwide. Most really? of them, are, most of them are in the U.S., but there's like chapters in Germany, London, like all, Mexico. Is this a bike game? Nah, <laughs> nah. the 49ers. That's 49ers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What? And it's like, for example, just in the Bay Area, there's chapters. There's like, there's a 415 chapter. Okay. There's a Richmond chapter that I'm a part of. Hey, the Hayward, uh, 650, and the list goes 925. Like it goes down the list. We've got Fairfield, mm -hmm. a bunch, and then. That's just in our area. Then you go up and down California, and all. This is a chapter like damn near every state, yeah, and they I all and a lot of them travel. It's either people that grew up Niner fans for whatever reason, or people that moved and went somewhere like this, like two Vegas chapters. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. like all of them, a lot of them come to the game. There you go, NinerEmpire.com. Hey. If you go right there where it says chapters, uh -huh. click on that, and there's gonna be a map. This is funny. Right there. Damn, we're that's, all, that's all the chapters right there. That's, that's just a, a lot in Texas, though. That's just in the U.S. But look Damn. at the, the California. So Everybody yeah. listening, we're at uh, oh, NinerEmpire.com. We're on the website. Yeah, so you know, so that's all the chapters. So then, like, the dude Joe, who's the founder. Shout out to Joe, man. I work with him, and then he has put together this. He, he started this in 06. You know, when we sucked. So look at that. Oh, <laughs> when we <laughs> sucked. When we sucked. You know what I'm saying? That's so faithful. so it's like, it's faithful. So it's just. Yeah. So my chapter started in 2012, and the only reason it did was because we knew him, but we never really like put a, put a chapter together. Yeah, we were just used to hang around each other back in the stick. So then one year he was just like, "Man, why don't you guys put it put a chapter together? You guys got enough people." So then that happened in 2012. So you know we've been rocking. I'm the VP of uh, the Richmond chapter. Shout out to Dave, who's the um, the president. Shout out to the Richmond chapter, man. Richmond chapter. What do, what so you know chapters do. Um, they're booster clubs. We're, we're official booster clubs. So every time you you make a chapter, uh -huh. that you get on. If you go to the Forty uh, ers official website where their booster clubs are at, we're listed on. Nice. So they're they like the Shriners, right? Um, I'm not familiar I with the Shriners. This <laughs> 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 is people wearing those making shit up. <laughs> yeah, I did. but I yeah, but, but, but we're 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 the affiliated. We're affiliated with the with the actual Forty ers and then so then we started doing. So then back in Candlestick. Uh, he used to tailgate and do all that stuff, and then he used to be like over there by the water tower. And where's I was, dude from? Uh, he's from he's from Pacific, I think, or he lives in San Francisco now. But oh, okay, but he you know he's from the area. But um, we used, we used to, we used to all tailgate back at the stick, mm -hmm. and then that kind of led to Levi. So when we got to Levi Stadium, this whole time he knows I DJ, but I was trying to be cool. 
and not DJ at the tailgate. I was just trying to be a regular ass fan. So in 2014, we moved and I would tailgate with them, but they would just have a speaker out there. So in 2016, he said, hey, man, I know you don't feel like working at the game, but I'm trying to set off the 2016 season just something different was it the yeah. was that the first year i leave no the, last year was the first year the first year i leave i was 2014 okay, okay. that was a, that's when the stadium first opened okay so then Damn, in 2006 it's been that long? yeah it's been that long oh, this is this i think it's the sixth season already so then you know we all had season tickets i have season tickets since candlestick so in 2006 Flex. in 2016 <laughs> in 2016 joe says to me hey man you know i want to do something different can you come out and dj just this one tailgate so i said all right man I said, but you know what's going to happen, right? He said, what? I said, I'm going to come out there. I'm going to rock this shit. Rock and then people are going to ask you to bring me back. So are you ready for that? He goes, all right. So I come back. We do the first one. Killed it. Rocking. Been there ever since. Rocking. So 16, 17, 18, 19. This is my fourth year doing it. So every Damn. game was a tailgate? Every game at the tailgate. Blue lot one. We're at the, we were there. What's Blue that shot one. thing y'all do? Oh, it's a shot stick. It's 49 shots. 49? 49. It's, it's a shot it's stick. It's a shot stick. It's long as fuck. <laughs> and then, and then we, I saw it, but I didn't know it was 49. 49 shots. And then the fuck, Joe likes to get people fucked up, so he buys the fucking cinnamon. I like Joe. Uh, I like what's that, Joe already. What's that shit called? Uh, 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 Fireball. Fireball. Oh, I, can't, I can't think of it. He, he puts Fireball on this shit, and he walks around, and if, like, let's say, for example, I say, hey, it's my boy Phil's his first tailgate. He grabs a bottle and be like... Oh, oh, automatic. Automatic. He tries to get you fucked up. That's just it. Damn. So it's 49 shots. He sounds so like a cool dude. We get on the, we get, <laughs> I get me and my brother get on the mic and we explain the rules. The rules is like everybody gets behind one shot and, mm. and then we count. The, there's two, three counts. We count one to lift it and hold it to your lips. Then one, two, three, and you drink. So just so mm. everybody's in unison. Yeah. So we do those. Maybe about four of those a tailgate. Yikes! We got about we got about three hours in the tailgate. So it depends on the crowd. You know what I'm saying? Or y'all got food there? too Yeah, we got food there too. You know, what if he, you got a short dude like me, how can I reach oh, my shot? Perfect. I'm glad I'm glad you asked that because if you look at all my videos, it, the, this is the disclaimer. I said, okay, you have when to wear I, high heels. I, no, I exp, I explained the rules right then. Bring I said, your stool. I said if you're tall. I said, be mindful of the short people. That's exactly what I say. I said, be careful with me. I said, shout out to all my five footers. Hey. <laughs> so we just do it like that. So yeah, That's so every five dog, baby. So ever, <laughs> so ever since then, ever since then, we've been rocking. Nice. What I go check that out. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Come. Through. This is dope. Yeah, it is dope. I mean, a lot of people. It's funny that a lot of people come just for the tailgate and they don't even go to the game. Drop some names of people that you didn't know were Niner fans that 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 show out for y'all. Like artists or just regular people? Artists, artists. Um, shit, I don't, I don't know because I think I know everybody. I knew everybody was fans before mm. other people did. Like for example, uh, Money B from Digital Underground. I didn't know that. Right, a lot of people didn't know that, but me, me knowing him for so many years, that's my boy. Shout out to Money B. Shout, hey. out, shout out DJ Fuse, Digital Underground. Um, I've known him for a long time, and he used to go to Candlestick. Mm-hmm. I used to always run into Money B And I was like Shit I didn't know you were fucking You're from Oakland He goes nah man But I'm a Niner fan Oh another what? person I didn't know This is I didn't know this I didn't know Easy E was a Little, Niner fan Really And Little Easy is too man, Little Easy is too right. And then like I, I got cool with Little Easy E And he broke it down to me I'm like I was like How is I, I never knew that like, How all would the that, Raider gear All the Raider gear he wore He goes nah man He goes Easy E was a diehard Niner fan yeah. But we lived in a crip neighborhood so we couldn't wear red Ooh. right that's, that's that's point number one Ooh. point number two was and I'm like, so what's up with the radio gear he goes that was just an image thing yeah it was just like a uniform ah so you in la the raiders are in la at the time they're wearing raider shit it's all black so it's kind of like it was like the look i'm going to work right because now. even dj yella he's a rams fan Oh, so they're shit. not. I don't know about Dre and, and Ram, but but or Cube, but oh, Cube's a Raider fan. Yeah, Cube's a Raider. Yeah. But I don't know about Dre and Ram, but I know Easy was a Niner fan. Yella is a Rams fan. Mm. So that's what he told me. I even got it on video. He even said it on my IG. I saved it. Where he's saying <laughs> this shit. He was like, "You see what it is." So then you know, getting back to this, Niners you know, with attitude. Yeah, he. You know, I was at first. I first thought of this in 2012. But I didn't really push it that hard because I was like, damn, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get copied. They right. gonna hit me. Yeah. They gonna hit me for this and this, right? The SF and the uh -huh. NWA. But then when I met Easy, somebody put him onto my clothes, and I was like, what the fuck are you tell him? 
Like now I'm gonna get in trouble. Yeah. Oh, you already yeah. thinking but, the worst. He's gonna give me. I'm thinking the worst. So he, so Lil Easy, this is 2016. Lil Easy DMs me. He goes, Yo, bro, are you the one that does the NWA shit? And I was like, Fuck. Uh, I couldn't kinda. lie. Yeah. I couldn't lie. I couldn't lie. I, I couldn't lie. And I was like, Yeah, blood, I do, man. What's up? Oh man, can you mail me like three of them? <laughs> got you I'll a pack. Twenty. I got, I, I got whatever you want, bro. I got you. So I sent them to his. I, the funny thing is, he gives me his address, and it's fucking Easy E's mother's house. What? Because someone's always home to take that package. Yeah. So <laughs> everyone got that house. So then the next time I see him, he was like, "I'm like, bro, did you get my package?" He was like, "Yeah, bro, I got it. You know, you know where you sent it to, right?" And I was like, "Nah, where?" He goes, "That's fucking." My dad's mom's house. Yeah. It's been there since before my dad was. That's everybody grew up in that house, and I was like, "Shit!" Tight. So I got, I got easy, easy. <laughs> mama's mama's <laughs> house in my phone, <laughs> boy. <laughs> yeah, it was, he's cool as fuck though. He, he a Niner fan, and then uh, we actually brought him out against Green Bay. The Green Bay game, we brought him out. The performed. Monday night game. Yeah, was, was it Monday, Monday night? night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He came out and performed, and people loved it. I heard Schoolboy Q's a uh, Niner fan too. I don't know about that. I haven't heard about that. Is he but. really? Well, he was he was he was in a Ben Baller's line when the Niners won <laughs> against the Seattle. He said, "Keep that same energy, bitch." Yeah. And I was like, oh. "He called him a pussy too." And ooh. I was like, "Oh, oh, he said another man call you a pussy." <laughs> Sorry, it's just being messy, but yeah. Sorry. <laughs> hey, but then when I like rocking with Juice, okay, he he was. I don't know if you still are the official DJ for Dunk Exchange DXE. Yes. Still current? Still current. Still they haven't current. they haven't done any events lately, but like I, two I, years. I right? Yeah, yeah. Because you know what happened was, uh, um, I don't know what I, I guess more uh, sneaker events started popping up, and, mm-hmm. and then and then not to get into anybody's business, but there was a change in uh, guard. Um, it was the the uh, how can I explain this without um, the when, person that used to handle most of the bookings for Dunk Exchange yeah. left Dunk Exchange. So it led to other people doing it that weren't Feeling. familiar. Yeah, uh, they know? didn't have the same roller day. Exactly. So not only that, they, like the dude that left had the relationships. Yeah. So then the other people come in try to replicate, and it couldn't. It just took a little longer to keep up. Yeah. So then, like certain things that people were used to weren't happening, and then and on top of that, you have like sneaker con. Uh, let me the sneaker uh, yeah. pop up, you know, and everybody else is is kind of like you know doing like little sneaker events, and and then it kind of like, in that sauce. It, it kind of like it kind of like drowned it out, you know. Yeah. So yeah. he did the last one he did didn't do. It wasn't whack, but it wasn't what the standard was. <laughs> no. So then he kind of like fell back a little bit. So he's still doing things like in Southern California and in other big cities, but he hasn't come back here yet. So I'm hoping he brings it back this year. Juice. Was like, we'll be at a DXE and then I'll throw him. I was like, hey, play uh, <laughs> like, like, I'm that dude that runs to the booth sometimes or I'll text him, hey, play some a cool night. No, it, it's a uh, can't see us. KNT. Oh, oh, yeah, I was like, KNT. He, he has and he has that in his catalog. I have the actual vinyl, man. What? You feel that. me? That's why I, yeah. I can hit him because real first go ahead, like, yeah, I got that for you. Oh, yeah. I got the, that shit on the, vinyl too. the R. Kelly That's remix, insane. though. <laughs> yes, yeah, actually, it's funny because. <laughs> There was a, a while back, Gus actually hooked me up with this gig at the, uh, what's the name of that barbershop? Mass Appeal? Uh, yeah. Mass Appeal in Oakland. No, no, no. Hella Massive. Hella Massive. That's yeah. it. My bad. My bad. <laughs> Hella <laughs> Massive. It's all good. Shout Hella, out to them. Hella Massive. And then, the, you know, it was Mac Mall's uh, book signing. Mm-hmm. But you knew, Ma- you knew Mall. Yeah, though. Mac Mall's the homie. Yeah. And I, I know pretty much every uh, legendary Bay rapper I'm good with. So, um, I, you know, it's a phone call away. So, um... I hit him up like, blood, I'm about to be DJing and shit. And he, we came through, we did it. So then Gus was like, you got to play it, can't he? And put it on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> so I grabbed my phone. And I'm not I, I'm not the selfie dude. And like, you listen to him? So, so I got my phone. <laughs> I, I got my phone and I fucking do the selfie shot. And I'm playing it with Mac Ball in the background. Now, this is with my homie Gus. <laughs> <laughs> and Andy's rocking the F-word shirt. And I was rocking the F-word shirt. Shout out to Fernando and Gus. You know, they always take care of me. The F-word was, the uh, I want to say, the first DXC sponsor. Uh, your first DXC sponsor, yes, right? Yes, yes. And like the, probably the most active one at that Hi, you know, so you like I always me? I always got love for them they always take care of me so I always rock it I extra extra push it because yeah. it's, it's, it's love you know so. we don't have to be there but but uh, like my man let everyone know like hey, yeah. F words in the building but. yeah I mean it was <laughs> I, I used to I used to push that shit so hard that people would come up to me and be like where, where is it at 
Oh, oh, but they're not here. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, yeah. I'm just pushing it. Sorry. Yeah. sorry, here's their Instagram. Go to the fworkclothing.com <laughs> yeah. and you can get it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not, yeah, and you, you, because you could reach in your, you, you would do like your base set. Yeah. And then yeah. you would do like your, your 90s, like uh, all the classics, the, yeah. You, you you would hit hit home, and but then you would also do like an east coast set, yeah, yeah. What I would see the, the original concept of the dunk exchange when I got hired to DJ. First of all, the way I got on the dunk exchange was a uh, shout out to Gary Archer, he hits me Legend up, Legend Gary, yeah. He hits me up one time. This is back in like 09. He hits me up and he says, Hey man, we're doing, I'm at the dunk exchange, man. Like the DJ faked on him, he's like, I'm not. They're probably not going to pay you, but I guarantee if you come and rock like you do, which I know you can, they'll hire you for the next one. And I said, okay, cool. Name of the so, game, right? So I came over there. They didn't pay me. I didn't I didn't, I didn't. didn't come in there with any expectations but to rock, mm-hmm. right? And, the, and then the requirement was play old school hip-hop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I said, cool, easy. So I came to the – it was at City Nights that time. So I went over there, and I did a two-hour set. I, I met the dude and I was like, well, what do you want me to play? And he was like, man, play just some like old school hip hop. I said, cool. I start rocking, then I get into the old school classic Bay Area set and motherfuckers mm. like, ah. Yes. You see all the, you see all the, the well, what year was this? This is 09. 09. Yeah, you see all like the 25 and overs look over like, hey. Yeah. They're looking at me like, hey. Am I cruising mission right now? Like, what, what, the, <laughs> what you know about that? <laughs> like, man, hey. so I, you know, I rocked it. So the dude was like, uh, you killed it. He goes, uh, let me get your number. I'm, uh, um, we'll be back in six months. So, that was, the rest is history. I've been rocking ever since. Yeah. So that's ten plus years. We've been rocking with the Dunk Exchange, and um, you know, shout out to Gary. And uh, yeah, that's it. So, so like, um, the whole time he wanted me to keep it just like old school, just like classic hip hop. Yeah. So then I just made him um myself being in the, from the Bay that I would set aside. It started with just a set where I would DJ for maybe. 30 minutes to an hour just straight Bay classics. Then mm. I started breaking it up where I would do some in the beginning, some at the end, and then mix it up with some East Coast shit. Just mm-hmm. like, just stuff that we grew up on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just the classic bars, you know what I'm Golden saying? Golden era of yeah, hip hop. Exactly. So I would do all that shit and I would always, now sometimes I would record it and I think I even put one out one time when you guys were my sponsor. Yeah. And I put out the mix and people were loving that shit. It was, was that on Mix Crate? Yeah, it was on Mixcrate. Yep, yep. Are you on Mixcloud? Um, you know what? I am, but I haven't uploaded anything yet. But I'm going to. I mean, because for a while, what I was doing is I had a uh, you send it account. Uh, mm, remember okay. him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you could just like upload, depending on what account you had, you could just send out the link and people could download it. So that's yeah. what I would do. The blast. And I would just get like thousands of downloads of my mix, and people would be like, "Oh man, we pumped your mix at the graduation party." I don't. I didn't like to do that at first because then they would put DJs out of work. You know, because yeah. like if you download somebody's mix, then you don't need to buy, you know, a higher DJ. Mm-hmm. So that was my thing. Name is out there yeah, now. but now I'm like, fuck it, man. Yeah. So my tags are all over it, so it's cool. Touch- exactly. So just touching on DJs, mm-hmm. if you would have to give you your top five DJs, not including your brother, <laughs> let me just do a disclaimer for you. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is he on top- your top five? <laughs> top five? Of course, yeah. My brother actually is, in my opinion, I think, I think my brother, skillfully, I think is better than me. And, and it takes a big man to admit that it does. It just, it just. I think that my brother was younger than I was when we started DJing, mm-hmm. and, and um, I think my once I, I started getting on, I think my my uh, my focus was more on thank you, was more on trying to get on where he was practicing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He was working on his craft. He's working on his craft more than I was, and I'm over here trying to fucking get on and get it some. Because he knew you were gonna pave the Let way. Let me make a mixtape <laughs> real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, uh, we, we we made a lot of money off mixtapes back in the day. Until that it, was a that was a time when you yeah. could buy mi- actual yeah. mixtapes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we we uh we did really well on that until it, you know until. They shot I, that I, shit I, I that think I think, in, in my opinion, I think the mixtape game got ruined when Fifty Cent dropped his mixtapes. Because then after Fifty dropped his mixtapes, everybody named Mama was just copied with his formula. Yeah. And uh, most of, most of them were whack. And then and then it, it became a confusion with consumers because. Let's say prior to the 50 thing, people will go to a store and be like, hey, I, I want a mixtape. And they would give them a mixtape like mine. And it was dope. Then. Shout out to Amoeba. After, after Amoeba, <laughs> Rasputin's. Rasputin's. Uh, um, okay, the Zebra Records, uh, man, uh, Q Records. Creative Music. 
Creative music, music, Joe. Rest in peace. Rest, I mean, rest in peace, Joe. Joe. Um, yeah, he used to carry my mix. I used to carry my mixtapes everywhere. But but yeah, getting back to the point of Fifty, I think fucked it up because after that, every up and coming rapper would just take somebody's beat and rap over it, and do ten of those, and then call it a mixtape and try to put it in the store. Mm. Now you're a consumer and you're you get to the store and you're looking at the, oh all these are mixtapes. Okay, well let me buy this one and then they can pick up the whack one, which is not even mixed. It's not even a DJ. It's an mm. artist. Or up and coming artists, <laughs> and then they're like, "I ain't buying no more mixtape. This shit is whack." So, so your top five DJs are my top five DJs. I'm gonna go by. I would say not because they're the dopest. I would just think because they influence me. Okay. So me being from the Bay, I used to always listen to Cameron Paul. Oh yes. So that was like my favorite DJ back in the day. I used to listen. I used to record his shit, and I used to just like how he mix his his mixes were flawless. So I patterned myself after that as far as the mixing. As far as the scratching, I, uh, there was a, this DJ called Grandmaster DXT. DXT. Grandmaster DXT. He, yeah. He, East Coast, right? Yeah. He used to fucking scratch and cut it up and I used to like him. And then DJ Scratch from EPMD was dope as hell. Uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff. Mm. And uh, that's four, right? Um, that's yeah. probably the four that I can think of off the top of my head. I mean, there's many others. But but um, those are probably the four that I think I kind of patterned myself after. Not biting, but just I, that was the bar. Yeah, I looked at it and I was, was like, man, if, if I could, yeah, yeah I was, that there was my go. influence right there. And um, you know, um, back in the day, I hear there was so many DJ crews and they were all dope. You know, it's like because everybody, the Bay Area culture, DJ culture is so rich and it's so talented that there's no room for whack shit back in the day so nah. like everybody was dope and trying mm-hmm. to do each other so you know back in the day like all the filipino crews they would have like five to ten djs and they were all <laughs> they were, but they were all dope though they were all dope they all looked the same you don't know who's dj yeah time. And, and i went to school with a lot of those so i was i was like i was like damn they're fucking dope you know what i'm saying yeah. so it's like you know so my hat's off to all the all the filipino crews from back in the day but they were all tight but it was like a structure where you had the top one and then you went down the line of who fillers yeah fillers but they were all dope <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah you know back in the day you want to get on you got to be you got to wait your turn and, and carry your crates and, and do what you got to do but carry your crates kids oh yeah you don't know nothing about that carry <laughs> your crates kids you was a real dj if you had someone follow you in with to a carry. dolly or to carry a crate to get someone in that was under yeah, 21 yeah. that was the guarantee smooth yeah. in like that was it i did just carry this shit i, I think i got my brother in <laughs> <laughs> before he was 21 that's it slide in come on so what do you yeah. think about the the new generation of djs um it's easy i mean i think it's i think it's easier uh, uh it's kind of like the same thing in music it's like all the trap beats sound the same yeah and then you have some that stand out so it's kind of like that you know what i mean i mean i'm not saying there's any the i just think is i it's think different. it's i think it's, it's different i think it's easier for people to be like oh, oh i love music i'm gonna buy a laptop and i'm a dj yeah. but it's kind of like you don't study the craft or pay homage to who came before you so that's all it is i, I think if you're a dope dj and and you studied it and, and you practiced and, and you did it like the priors did then it's cool but yeah. if you just pick up a thing and you're doing button pushing and you're just like ah oh, whatever it is that's not and have your preset mix before yeah, you that's, leave, that's leave for the club mm-hmm. like phil was a wax dj too you know what i mean I like people who shit yeah. love the 12s yeah, right yeah, yeah that's it that's can't it. let it go yeah you can't i still got my vinyl i i, I was gonna sell it and i couldn't I can't. It takes yeah. up hella room, though. <laughs> it like, is. I got a whole storage bin in the back of the house. You keep telling yourself, fun. I'm going to mess with it yeah. one day. Yeah. I'm going <laughs> to clean, clean up my record. I yeah. think when I retire, I'm going to be like, yeah, you go to vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> but I still got it, though. I still got it. But yeah. a lot of stuff is on. I, the reason I don't get rid of my vinyl, I have a lot of records that even if you search it on YouTube, you don't find it. Or, or like, for example, the K&T record. Yeah. You might find it on YouTube, but it'll either be the remix, the one that they made after, you won't have or, or, it, or it won't be, it might be the original, but it won't be good quality. It's yeah. never crispy. It's not crispy. It's so, not so crispy. I got, I got the crispy version, yeah, you know you're... what I'm saying? I got the actual vinyl that K&T pressed up. Yeah. I, gotta, I gotta ask you, where you get that? I don't remember. <laughs> I, got, I got it when they put it out. I mean, you know, I used to be in a record pool. Oh, okay. I was going to say, so, what record pool did you get yeah. that from? Um, <laughs> I used to be in, I used to be in, I used to be in uh, the first record pool I was in, was Q's records. It yeah. was Hot Top, Top of the, the hill. hill. Top of the Hill. Q, shout out to Q. Of us? Yeah, Q, yep, 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 yeah, DJ Q, uh, um, one of the founders of Bullet, Bulletproof Scratch Hamsters. Oh, shout out to You know, so that, you know, 
they used to battle just kind of like the, the scratch pickles you know they're, they're from that era so i went up i used to always go up there and buy a lot of vinyl like every week like i, I would get paid every friday and i'd be there buying the latest whatever it was right before that it was right here creative music but mm-hmm. when, when I, once I, I started DJing, that's the thing. I used to buy records before I knew I was going to become a DJ. I had hella records before I started DJing just because I loved the music. You're just collecting it. I was just collecting it. And I had hella. So when I started DJing, I already had a head start. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had hella vinyl already. So then that's when I uh, one of my uh, cousins was hella cool with one, one of the, my cousin's best friend. used to work at Q's. Mm. And he was like, Blood, where do you buy your vinyl at? And I'm like, creative music. But you used to go to the top of the hill and check out cues. I'm like, all right. So I went, you know, and then, you know, I went in there. I, I didn't I didn't even know they had a record pool. I just, oh, really? I would just go in there as, as a, you know, every week I'd be in there buying vinyl. You spending. had to ask about it. Nah, it wasn't even that. I would go in there every week, every Friday I'd buy vinyl. Every mm-hmm. week, right? But whatever it came out that was dope, I'd buy it. And then one day Q was like, bud, you know, what do you be DJing at? And I, was like, I told him, I said, I'd be doing, you know, at the time I was mobile. I say, you know, I'll be doing quinceañeras, weddings, birthday parties, you know, the whole whatever. That's where the money is now, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. It, right? It, it's never Real talk. It, it never left. It, it never, right? It never left. Real talk. It never left, right? So then I tell him, I said, I got my own equipment, you know, I do da da da. He was like, man, and he was kind of hesitant, like, because usually record pools are like for like professional, yeah. in the scene, in the scene, radio club, and all that shit. But he saw that I was there every week spending bread, and he was like, well, where you at this week? And I tell him. Well, yeah, this week I tell him, and then then one one time I was actually at a club, and I was like, "But I'm doing my first club this week." Then he was like, "Okay, this dude's he's Moving serious." On up, man. Yeah, he was like, "All right, well, what you thought? What you think about being in a record pool?" And I was like, "I don't even know what that is." And then he explained it to me. I was like, "Let's do it." So I pay my dues, and then every week they, you know, I get the promos. Yeah. What was that monthly like? Back then, it was, I think ten bucks. I want to nah, hell no, nah, I wish <laughs> it was like I want to say sixty bucks. 65. There's a, of, there's a lot of people that don't know what the fuck a record yeah, pool is. Yeah, record pool. Tell, tell, tell them what a, a record, record pool is. is pretty much um, a record pool would be in contact with the labels. Back then, the labels would press record up. Record labels. Record labels, yeah. The record labels would press up promotional vinyl, which is the vinyl that they would give to DJs before the actual vinyl went on sale. Ooh, yeah. So the, it could be like a month or two before that record actually dropped. And the DJs would be playing it wherever they were at, mainly in the clubs or the radio. That's where DJs actually broke a record. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Were, they were like, I got this new shit from wherever, Bad Boy, and I'm going to play the new Pac song, whatever, and it'll be, it'll be a promo, right? It was different from the actual release. So then that's what they had. They had, they had. they had relationships with all the different labels, and they would send like 30 to 60 pieces of vinyl. Sometimes you get a double, sometimes you get a single, which means, what I mean a double is mean two vinyls so yeah. you can go back and forth and just, I, I, you know what i mean so yeah, then, i mean that's so that's what it was so then i joined the, the record pool and, and and that was it you know after that i started getting all the stuff early so then i'd be at a party and i play the shit that the radio's playing but you can't buy it and I'm like, where you get that at and i'm like all right so make yeah. tape here you go yeah. <laughs> yeah. Buy that shit right here. Yeah. Yeah. it's on my mixtape you, you can get this song and 14 more you know what i'm saying so yeah. you know you but, got a discount bro yeah 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 so you know it went hand in hand so it, it was cool do you have this uh album like very few people will have it unless you were like uh i don't know i, I just heard it once at the radio station and came me up played it once or twice it's uh it's the go d- no nah, what the fuck tell me when to go but it has Kanye West uh, yes the remix and oh. and and the yeah, game I, right and, and Ice Cube yeah and, that's, 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 that's just horrible that's just horrible that's just horrible Kanye that shit West is, no, that shit when he's so funny on the track that shit's weak man tell me when to go that shit was so whack uh, like, it wasn't uh, good I never hey. I never played that shit I think I played it I think I played it once and I was like I deleted it from my computer. Oh, so <laughs> I deleted that shit. Yeah, like, never mind. <laughs> Do you remember that era? Nice try, bro. When the Bay Area, when one, one person had a hot song, the whole Bay would do like a Bay remix to it. Yeah. That, and was, that was based off of my point. That was after 50 <laughs> Cent. 50 Cent set that up. He fucked it up for everybody because people were just like, it get, I got to a point where people would be like, oh, give me that instrumental. People would hit me up all the time. Artists would be like, Give me the instrumental to the new whatever the hot song was. Mm. And then they do their remix and you'd have like 50 whack versions and maybe two cool ones, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then people show up to the club with their fucking CD. 
because yeah. I play met, this, dog. Play yeah, this. For real. It's the hottest shit. That everybody loves it. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> what did you record it last night? So how does everybody know it? Uh, you love it. I don't love it. I don't know. That's when all I got's vinyl. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. when you play that. All I yeah, got's vinyl. But once the CD players came out and they knew that, then that's it caused a whole different friction. That yeah, that's when you had to have like six people in the booth. Yeah, to yeah, block yeah. that. Yeah, and I did. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know. I want to know who is your favorite Frisco rapper. Oh, good Ooh. question. Man, that's I can't even answer that because no, I don't want to hurt. No, I don't even want to hurt no Ooh. feelings. No. I mean, you know what? I, I don't, okay, top three. Top three. I've, I've dealt with all of them. I know. That's why I want to so know. I, I don't. Want, I don't, I don't I, I'm cool with all of them, man. But you know, it's um, bar for bar. It's Quinn. Yeah, he's he he's is. a Frisco rapper's favorite rapper. Yeah, yeah. He's, you feel he, me? He's a, you know Quinn. Quinn. But um, it's the you know, mayor, man. I think I'm just. I'm not even gonna give you my top three. I'm just gonna tell you what I like about every Frisco rapper that I. Do How about with. your your like uh, your one favorite that nobody really knows? Mm, sleeper, that sleeper no, that nobody knows. Like a. Um, like or, or nobody would even think because you are automatically oh think Quinn. Oh, oh, <laughs> you know what Don Cisco, he's from oh, here from the Excelsior. I think. Oh boy, yeah. that was, was cool. a hot. I think I think what I do think is I think Selsky is underrated. Selsky, yeah. as remember, a businessman, and all the way around, just, just as a rapper and producer. I remember I seen him at Elephant Bar at, in Ceremony. Yeah, <laughs> no, he be he be he, he's a man of the people. He be everywhere. he is. And, yeah, and he when everywhere. I was when I was traveling doing all the award shows and and, and touring. That He's boy, out there. That boy was out there. Yeah. He was like, I'd be out there in Houston chilling with Mike Jones and Lil Flipper. Here comes Selsky. <laughs> oh, shit. I'd be in Chicago and we're chilling with Twister. Here comes Selsky. So he would be, he would make relationships. Uh, one time out here in the city, like 02, remember when Benzino had that song, Rock the Party? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then I met Benzino in Miami. So when he hit me when he got out here, I go to his tour bus, which was parked in front of the W at down Howard was and 3rd. pop something in Miami? Uh, that, no, I was out there DJing for uh, uh, Memorial Weekend. I just want you to flex. It's like it's like a <laughs> <laughs> Memorial. No, Weekend. no, there's other time I was in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've I've DJed it all. I've done it all, man. But I was in Miami DJing. The, the biggest weekend in Miami is is Memorial Weekend. It's, is it? it's like it's like a, another freak nick. It's just what? it's bananas. It's like it's crazy. When you go on it, can we go? <laughs> Let's go. Banner Empire. <laughs> <laughs> this is just juice on this one. <laughs> They're welcome though. <laughs> but yeah, I was out. I was. Uh, I lost my chin of thought. Oh, I met Benzino out yeah, there because yeah. he used to have a house out there. So I went to the studio with him and he did some drops for me and then we chopped it up. And I'm like, he, I'm like, I'm San Francisco, blah, blah, blah. He's like, yeah, I'm from fucking, you know, I think it was, he said Connecticut or some shit, wherever the fuck he's from. And <laughs> and uh, I like, he's outside of Boston, somewhere. He's out there in the New England area. Mm. He, that's where he's from, right? So he, at the time, he was still running the Source magazine. Yeah. So he says, man, I want to get you in the Source. And, da, 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 and then, you know, I'm, I'm going to be out in San Francisco in a couple of weeks. So I'm like, all right, well, hit me when you get out here. So he hits me. I meet him at his hotel, which is the W, and he has this fat ass tour bus parked outside. Was it on the two way pager? Yeah, <laughs> it was. It actually was. Thanks, motherfucker. Hey, you know what time it, it is. It was a two way pager. Y'all welcome, motherfucker. Yes, it was. It was. So, so I'm going. I go to the fucking tour bus. They're playing. They're in there playing PS three, whatever it was. PS two. One. This is PS one. One or, <laughs> one or two. They're playing. Oh shit. Oh, shit. There About to hook me up. Oh, there it is. There it is. They're playing. They're playing PS in the tour bus. And smoking mad weed in there, so like shit, I go in there and then fucking and walk in and who do I see? Fucking Selsky. Selsky working. Selsky was he. Everybody that I knew, Selsky knew. And so it's kind of like I think that gets lost because he don't flex that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He he might flex it a little bit, but he just moves. He just moves, man. Just because he's not on the radio, don't mean he's moving. Nah, he ain't moving. Nah, 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 nah. He has fans and shit, so you know. Real G's moving. So yeah, silence. yeah. So you know, I think like I lasagna. think I think Selsky is the uh, probably the most underrated, yeah. like out of the classic rappers. And uh, JT was always around. Whenever there was events, he would always like. Yeah. You know, because like that's true. What I understand is people always checked in, right? People. Always, so Selsky was one of those guys, like he's a check in, right? Somebody would check in. I'm gonna be here, and then you know, like, and then he was also the weed dude. So you know, let him know what the check in is. The check in is just pretty much like a courtesy when, like, especially like if you're not familiar, but even if you are, you kind of like it's kind of like a courtesy you call mm-hmm. whoever the factor is from that city, 
and you just kind of let them know, like, hey, I'm, I'm gonna be, be in your area. I'm gonna be in your area. I got a show at Whoop the Whoop. Would you like to have lunch? And then you know you would you would go have drinks, lunch, whatever, kick it, and mm-hmm. then and then and whoever you checked in with would just come with you. That's when the label had money. Yeah, they would just they would, they would just uh you know you kind of would be like, I don't want to say like a escort, but just kind of like you're the, like the local. Yeah. That make sure they're good. Yeah, basically make sure I don't get robbed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that that and also you show them around your city. Yeah, yeah you know check saying? in yeah. like, and you know, so I would do the same thing. You know, I, I would fly into New York. I hear my New York people like, "Yo, I'm in Manhattan. You know, what's up? Oh shit, there's something going on. The BB Kings come through. Boom, we go. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it was good. Was good. You was, you were like always a DJ that always had a name out, but didn't what didn't need radio. Yes, yes. Um, I actually I tried to get on radio, but you know politics prevented it so it whatever you didn't need it though you don't need it. You didn't I, need I don't it. need it but I, I just thought like if you think about it like like the way i figured it just me from traveling right mm-hmm. i would be in new york a lot and then all the way new york radio worked was like this and this is how new york radio would be really good with the people they would they would put less whoever was hot in the streets eventually ended up on radio gave him some time Right, mm-hmm. because they were so hot on the streets that okay, fuck you. You had to put them on. You had to put them on. So I'm thinking that's how radio should work in the Bay too, and it did for a hot second because Rick Lee was hot in the streets. Boom, radio. Shout out to Dick Lee. Yo, my, my <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that right. <laughs> you know, like the pirate DJs were hot in the streets. Boom, they, were, Ivan. they, they were on radio. You know, what I'm saying I'm cool with Rolo, Ivan, my emotion. That's, that's all my folks. So then when I knew them before they got on radio when they were at Zebra Records, you know, so easy. You know, you know, on Fillmore, you know what I'm saying? So it's like uh that's how it happened real quick in the in the mid nineties, and then it kind of like then it became oh, it was a click yeah then it became after that it, it, it wasn't it was it was different mm-hmm. so then that's why corporate took over yeah to- corporate yeah. took over and then it became of like who knows who and, and that type of shit so you know I ain't hating on that but it just I'm just saying it's that what it was it's what it was you know what I'm saying so that's your experience as a DJ that wasn't in 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 that building but working in the industry but I knew everybody in the building yeah I just didn't was a able to be on the air so it's cool is it, eventually i just you know i created I, I i never really tripped off of that so i just i was creating my own lane without knowing i was creating my own lane. i was just yeah. doing me my focus was like i just gotta make this money and keep rocking every week and with that lane you were you were working and i'm leading to something you know you already know where <laughs> it's going um with, 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 with that lane uh-huh. you uh you created your own buzz uh KML had summer jams and then they stopped and they called it block parties. Right. They called it block parties because no one wanted the KML summer jam title at their venue because it associates with other shit. When the summer jam first started to pop up again, Mm -hmm. they did a run, a promotion on KML to where vote for your favorite DJ and he'll be the DJ at summer jam. Right. The first year was that, was that 2010? That's when the contest was and all, all what it was is the um they invited djs mm-hmm. to make a mix a, mm-hmm. ten, a 10 minute mix and send it in and they would post it on their website mm-hmm. and you would just vote for your favorite mix mm. so i said i wasn't gonna do it and, and then um people were like man you better do that shit and i'm mm-hmm. like i ain't gonna win like you know what i'm saying it just it's it's politics you know you have to go there you have to mail it to them it wasn't an upload, right? Um, I think it was an upload. I think, okay. it, I think it was. I think it was. I think you either emailed it or uploaded it, but okay. you didn't, it wasn't mailing, though. Okay. This is 2010, so by then, I think it was a little... I hope. <laughs> <laughs> so then, uh, so then I said... Fuck, so then I said, fuck it. You know, fuck it. I'm, I'm going to give it a shot, see what happens. So then my brother did it, too. DJ Mo One. Shout out to Mo One, man. So we both do it, and uh, we upload it, and it ended up being 66 DJs. 66 DJs. 66 DJs uploaded their mixes. And then, you know, we didn't know who was winning because they wouldn't show the results of the votes. I just, at the time, I had a big email list that I would just blast, like, support me. This is what I'm doing. I'll be and that's your own personal email list yeah. that before, like, the whole... What was before it? social media. Yes. Yeah. Before <laughs> social media, before, like, having a, a website, like, a website carry all those emails... Right, I had a website. Share at the contact, time. right? I had, I had a, I had a website, and I Did had you a juice stop his. Yes, exactly. come on, man. He knows. Come and, on, and man. I, and and I always, yeah, but you know why I didn't have .dot com because 
there were some little fucking kids <laughs> in Pennsylvania <laughs> who called themselves Juice Productions. Oh. And they took the DJJuice.com. Oh. That's the only reason why I didn't have it. it they were I, I don't even, kids. I don't even know if they were DJs, but they were involved in some type of music. But none of them were were DJ Juice. They were just D, they were just Juice Productions, and they took DJJuice.com. And then, no. and then <laughs> slash some, thug. Then some dude in Canada had DJJuice.net. Oh. So I'm like fuck. So I'm like looking at the possible um, selections, and the best one was DJJuice.biz. To, just to keep the name the same, but yeah. just to keep the, the right. tail end different. Dot biz, so I always have to explain. Dot biz, dot biz, dot biz. Dot so you had your own but email nobody list. Beats the biz. Yeah, so what I did was. Nobody beats so, so, the biz. Nobody <laughs> beats the biz. Exactly. That was it. So I what, what I did was, like, I used to have a girl at my club events walk around uh, with a clipboard asking uh, for people to uh, subscribe to my email blast every week. So every night I would have anywhere from twenty to hundred emails. She probably be pretty one too. Of course. Come on, <laughs> yeah, and, of course. And I would put them on. I would add it to my list. It got to a point where I had, I had thousands of emails. And then so when it was time to promote a party, email blast. Yeah. Yeah. Time to promote a. That was before a, Evite. Yeah, before Evite. Before all that shit. So it, I would just it was just my personal email blast to inform people what was going on with me, or, or whoever was affiliated with me. That was like the first wave of using technology to right. to, to to reach your audience. You yeah, know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. like we're from the era of paper flyers, right? Exactly. Like dope that's paper made, flyers. That's where I made my name. We we used to we used to um in the early two thousands we used to print up um I flyers made by um, brand one design. Shout out to Brandon. Shout out to brand one you Mojo know, Brand. Mojo Brand. That's that's my guy right there. So he we can I, get that's a whole nother podcast. I, 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 Mojo I Brand. Yeah, yeah. You gotta get Savages. him on. Yeah. You gotta get him out here. He he. He he knows his shit. Yeah, so I you know, so I came across him in the club game. He gave me a car one time. My Filipino I, homie. Yeah, he <laughs> actually he's Hawaiian. He, oh, that's right, that's right, that's right. Hawaiian and Japanese. He's not Filipino? No, he's not Filipino. <laughs> Damn. That's what I thought hey, too. Wow, you knew wow, him. Wow, yeah, wow. I, I, be, I believe I, I believe his dad is Japanese and his mom's Hawaiian. Something like that. There we go. Gus, Sorry, Gus. Gus Zero yeah. podcast. Oh, for one. one. <laughs> Swing in the midst. So he used to do, he used to do all my graphics. I, I came across his, it, I met him at a club one time. I don't even know. We were both drunk and then somebody else. Blush. Like, somebody was, nah, it was Sinbad. Sinbad. Holy Ooh, shit. Come like, on, like, man. Oh, so Come one on. time we were both drunk and somebody was like, I was looking for a Trecadero. graphic Trecadero. I was looking for him. <laughs> shit. <laughs> I was looking for a graphic designer and somebody was like, he does graphics and he, we both drunk. He gave me a card. I'm going to call you tomorrow. All right, fuck it. <laughs> so I called him and then. When that, you have to call people, yeah. there was no text coming. I called him like, "Yo, da, 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 I need a business card." He goes, "All right, come through the office." And he's have his office right here by ceremony. So I went through. This is ninety eight. So, mm, so when, and he did my graphics. He did my graphics from ninety eight to like two thousand twelve. Mono laughed because he wouldn't even graduate high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause, cause, <laughs> fuck you, Mono. And I, 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 I'm still, I'm still, I'm still in contact with him. You know, it, it's all good. You know, it's, it, it's all love. So yeah, man. Uh, I forgot where we were at. Brand one. Oh, he used to do my flyers. Yeah. So, so we used to go to paper flyers. So we used to go make. We used to he used to, he used to design them for me, and then he put me on to where to get them printed, and we would print like either five thousand or ten thousand, and we would. I had Damn. a team. I had yeah. a, for a ten thousand. I had a That's team. A I had a team, <laughs> and we would get. We were split up, and we would hit up all the clubs when they let out. Yep. Yeah, man, man, man. This what what year was this? Is ninety eight? This is like two thousand. Two thousand. Yeah. So the clubs two thousand. Fill up. Let's go through this catalog. There was a. Uh, Oh there, my God! City Nights is uh, the guaranteed. You gotta go there, even I, though I'll break it down for you. City Nights, uh-huh. uh, uh, a Sound Factory, Sound Factory, and MV. MV, MV. I don't think DVA was around no more. Beehive, 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 Beehive. And of course, in Oakland, you had like Jeffries, Bluesville, Du Soleil's, uh, on Broadway, um, Oasis. Mingles. Oasis. Mingles wasn't around yet. They didn't come till like oh three. Kimball's oh, yeah. Carnival. Oh, Kimball's. Yes, Kimball's. Kimball's Carnival was in was in, was in Emeryville, and then it moved to Oakland, and uh, in the city it was just like everywhere. It was a club everywhere. There was uh, where's the one where uh, Kanye tried to do a concert and they shut that shit down? Jillions. Jill- no, 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 no. The one. Uh, five fifty, rock. 550 Barnabas. Oh, 550 Barnabas. Barnabas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that, that was, was a little bit later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah a little later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was at Mission Rock too. That's where Mission he, was Rock he did not want to get out. Ooh, Mission I, Rock used to be the hey, one. Hey, I, I did a couple birthday parties, celebrity birthday parties at Mission Rock. Have you been there recently? 
Yes. Is it brunch? It's weird. It's, it's weird. <laughs> fucking you know, weird. You know why? Because it's like right across from the Chase Center. Yeah. Oh, and we know people that fucked in that elevator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that again? Oh. Uh, uh, Popping the there, headphone there, out. Sorry, sorry. Popping. Yeah. Sheesh. Yeah, man. So it's good times, man. Good times. Snow drift. Snow drift. Whisper. Whisper. Uh, what's the other one? Hey, so uh, it's snow drift. Oh, Velvet oh, Lounge. Velvet Lounge. Oh, oh. Shout out to Matt Corvey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Velvet Lounge. All, Velvet all, Lounge. All these Broadway clubs. I mean, it was, man, it was so many. That's you. It's so many. So outside, Damn. outside, when you DJ outside the Bay, what's your favorite Bay record to play? Ooh. It's, it's too short some uh, you know what Bitch. back in the day or now i mean i mean i think you know what it's it's different now because I'm, 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 I'm gonna give you i'm gonna give you two examples it's like now mm. since the internet and, 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 and social media now you can play pretty much anything because now every radio station is playing the same place yeah, yeah. back in the day our heart runs the world right now. Back, back in the day they were still stuck on old shit so let me give you an example i was um Two times. One time I was DJing in New York and one time I was DJing in Miami, right? Both times it would be like like remember, say for example, let's say Memorial Day weekend. Okay. In Miami, right? Okay. It's popping. Let's say 05. I was out there, it's popping. That's like crunk hyphy. It's era. crunk hyphy, right? So then <laughs> go people teeth. didn't respect the hyphy. They didn't. They man. didn't respect it, right? So then we're out there and then I'm gonna give you a perfect example. And I hate to uh you know how they the saying is don't meet your heroes yeah. mm. this is this is why so i'm djing for fat farm russell uh russell uh russell simmons, simmons yeah. i'm djing a fat farm party. Like a condor yeah right it's a, <laughs> hey, so respect I'm, man this is, Come in, on. This, man. Man. This, this is in miami right oh <laughs> five i'm djing and um i'm the middle dj as an opener me and then some other dude right but I didn't give a fuck because when I was DJing, it was super popping, right? Mm. So I'm DJing, I'm rocking in, I'm playing all the shit that's, that's popping. So I'm all, every time I go outside of town, I will always play bass shit, right? Whatever the fuck it was, right? So then Dougie Fresh comes in. And, you know, mm. you know I'm cool with Dougie Fresh. And he says to me, he goes, hey, I'm going to jump on the mic and we're going to get this crowd hype. And we're going we gonna, to we gonna represent every coast. We're going to start from the East Coast. Midwest, down south, and end with the west. And we're gonna play a song from every region, uh, the hottest shit, and get it popping. So he's trying to hype man this whole shit up. Yeah, 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 for sure. He was he was hired to do that. Okay. Right? I just didn't know he was gonna do it during my set. Ah right? it's perfect though. So I'm like, okay. So he says, For New York, we're gonna play whatever it was, right? I played the New York shit. Okay, when we get down south, you gotta play some ghetto boys. When we get Midwest, you gotta pay whatever, right? So when we get to the West Coast. He wants to play all LA shit. Mm. You're like, nah, so I'm like, bro. blood. It's like the West Coast is not just Snoop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because <laughs> at the time he was, you gonna play some G thing? I'm like, I'll play it. Yeah. Well, we gotta play some fucking Mac Dre too. Ooh. We gotta play some Kick the Sneak. Yeah. And there's and and, and then and then he was like, nah, what? man, we can't we can't do that. What year was this? Oh five. Oh five. Oh five. Right. So then he's like, we can't do that. No, no, no. People, you gonna kill the crowd. And I'm like, trust me. There's Bay people out there. Mm. We were There's people that came five. to this party because I'm here mm -hmm. from the Bay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got people here. I got people here for mm. sure, for sure, for sure. You like right? So he he didn't trust me on that shit. He was like, Nah, man. He goes. So he says to me, Fuck it. You know what I'm gonna do? He goes, I don't agree with that. So I'm gonna hype it up on the LA thing. But when you get on the Bay shit, I'm not gonna rock the mic. This is what Dougie Fresh said to me. Yeah. Really? So that's some hater shit right there, right? So I said, Okay. I don't give a fuck. I can rock my own mic in my head, right? So he, so he's doing his like, oh yeah, da -da -da -da, whatever. So we get down to the East Coast shit, Midwest, down South. We get to the West. Mm. I play the Snoop shit. <sighs> I might go, you know, every song I play from every region, everybody went crazy. Mm -hmm. Get to the Snoop shit. I play nothing but a G thing, whatever. Uh, they go crazy. He puts the mic down. So I grab it. I said, I stopped the music. I said. Where all my motherfucking Bay Area motherfuckers at? Yeah. That fucking place erupted. And I played fucking, fucking, uh, uh full of myself. Ooh. Motherfuckers went, ah, yeah, and, I, and then everybody went nuts, right? I, I, so, so then me, I'm, I'm, I'm in my zone. So I, I let it play one verse, went into super hyphy, kick the sneak. Each one's a mini bass set from them. Hello. Motherfucking win. Uh, Yankin. Hello. Yankin. 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 But DJ uh, fucking Dougie Fresh looked at me like. Oh. And walked oh, away. No. 
He walked away. He huh? walked away. He didn't even give my props. So I got on there and I I kept going in, bait shit, bait shit, bait shit, to the point where somebody came. Okay, you gotta switch it up, man. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's getting it's getting too crazy. It's getting in too here. crazy in here. And I'm, I'm like, like blood. It's like it's like. How you gonna tell me it's getting too crazy? It's fucking. This is what you want. Yeah, 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 yeah. You want the DJ to fucking rock this rock shit? The I'm party. rocking this shit right now. Rock yeah. the party. But, it, but it's not New York shit. It's not fucking what they want to hear. In Miami, right? In Miami, because it's East Coast promoters. So that's the shit that I've always dealt with. That's just the shit. Not just me. That's just hella bay people that deal with every time you go. They're gonna be like, oh, Bay Area. They're gonna give you a shout. But then when you come and show out, then they don't like it. Hello. Every time I'll go to New York, say that again. Say that again. When you come, it's like every time they see you, they give you love. Uh-huh. Bay Area, Bay Area, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. San Francisco, Bay Area, right? But then when you want to play Bay music, they don't want, they don't want that. Hello, they don't want that Ooh. shit. That's like real shit. And, and 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 I don't know about now. Fuck your team. Fuck your team. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hashtag FYT. And your fuck team. your team. Uh, another thing that the only thing that they would. This is how they would show Bay Love in New York, right? I'd be out there in the mid 2000s. I'd be out there a lot, right? Be in the club, and then the DJ would go do the same shit, play shit from different regions, and they'll be like, "Shout out to all my Bay people," and they play "I Got Five on it." That's it. That's Ooh. that's all they ever play though. That's it. Uh, that's, it could be there could be yeah, a popping ass song by E40 on the radio, and they're gonna play "I Got Five on it," uh, which I don't have a problem with, but that's not the only record to ever come out of yeah, the Bay. Come on, you know what I'm saying so. Let's, it's like, let's, let's do something in this decade. Like yeah. we got it. So this is like 05 and you're fucking in '95. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, <laughs> so it, you know, it just that's what you do. I mean, now it's probably not as bad because, like I said, now it's the internet, and now we you, move different. Yeah, it's, it's different now. So mm-hmm. it's like now it's like you just got to get on that rotation and you can be on the radio. Or you create like what the internet did was it allowed you to create your own buzz without the restrictions without of without radio. Well, yeah, without radio, right, right? Right, right, right. Like, but see, you did this on a paper flyer. Right, like, right. you did this like going to the clubs, putting putting flyers on everyone's cars, being outside right, the door when the right. club got out. Analog, and not digital. Right. Exactly. Eye, eye to eye contact. Yeah. This is. Like my hand, hand. hand to hand, hand to hand, like before my, MySpace, before MySpace, but like before Friendster. Yeah. <laughs> you change your name to the party this Friday. Yeah, <laughs> come yeah, see yeah. me. Yeah, and plus I had I had my email blast, I had my see? website, so I would just use every lane possible. We we go to different restaurants and drop off some flyers on the counter, or wherever, wherever, right. wherever. Barber shops, TGI Fridays on a Friday night. We Ooh, go, we'd be, in San Bruno. Yeah, Ooh, San, San Bruno. Used to party. San Bruno or Oakland, both were yes. popping. So we go in there and we would just be in there, just TGI Fridays. Yeah. Can I ask you real quick? Yeah. Go ahead. Because I, I, I see your Instagram. You work a lot with RBL Posse, or you're you're gonna do something with them, right? We just did something at the tailgate. Yes, the last tailgate. Yeah, yeah. We just last last. Uh, Which city last does time. RBL Posse work in? Have you ever played their their record in a different city and where they just Ooh. loved it? Like, yeah. I mean, um, I think now. With the internet, I think it works pretty much anywhere that people know their classic shit. You know, of course it's gonna work in the bay. And I've I've used it. See the thing is is um back in the days, this is how it used to work. So in the nineties, the reason one of the reasons why like 40 RBL Posse, JT, all the guys that were in out in the nineties, uh-huh. they were popping because not only because they had good music, is because let's say for example, you go to Houston, there was no Houston artist other than Ghetto Boys. Yeah. So they would gravitate towards that. But once every region, Atlanta, Houston, they started getting their own movement, they kind of stopped fucking with the Bay because now it's like their own shit. So now it's harder for the newer uh, artists to do that. 40 D. Shot on Bila did a couple like down south kind of. The kinda... Southwest Riders. Yeah, yeah Southwest. Exactly. Yeah, see, exactly. You know I, know, I got the vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> Flex, bitch. Yeah, yeah. So, it, so like all of those, um, like Spikes One, all of them. They all had the, they all have those fans from back in the day in the South in the Midwest because we had the independent blueprint. Exactly, yeah. the exactly. Bay got that independent. Blueprint. So then a lot of other regions started copying that, which is cool. You know, it ain't, it ain't a bad thing. You know, but yeah, that's it. Pay homage. Damn, Mono. Any any questions for the boy DJ? Uh, yeah, please? as a, as a Bay Area DJ, mm-hmm. how many times did you play D-Lo and a fight broke out? <laughs> 
<laughs> Come on, boy. I don't, I don't know. Come on, boy. Hey, with D Lo, you know what's funny though? You know. It's, it's like with D Lo, man, I used to roll. I, I know hella people. So there was one producer that I used to work with. And he knew, <laughs> he knew, he knew D Lo, right? And he was like, but I got. And the thing is, when D Lo, before D Lo blew up, he was big in the high school scene. Yeah. And he had, I got the original version that D Lo recorded wherever the fuck in somebody's closet it was horrible, mm, horrible but it was mix. still slapping it's a horrible mix it, but then it got so popping that the guys that came in were like well you gotta re-record that shit so we can play it on the radio and make it clean clean mix. that shit up and yeah. clean that shit up but I was playing the D-Lo record two years before it got popping what? on the radio Damn. because he used to do the circuit in the in the, uh, in the high schools so then you know, I, I, you know I'm good with D-Lo ever since shout out to D-Lo Sleepy D you know it's, it is good too because like they're youngsters back then. They're younger than me. So then, I remember Dilo's brother Sleepy D came up to me one time, and I had never met him. Mm. He came up to me, goes, "Hey Juice, I just want to give you props, man, because you doing that shit in the streets. Fuck with you, yeah, mm-hmm. you know. And I appreciate you pumping Dilo shit in my shit, because Dilo uh, had the the No Ho song, and then Sleepy D had the song uh, Sleepy Fucking D. Oh, Remember that song? Oh, yeah. So then I was I was pushing both oh, of their songs. Oh shit! Song. I didn't know they were brothers. Yeah, I don't know if they're real <laughs> brothers, but you know they're my brother. <laughs> they're, they're, they're my brother, but you know he's always you know they they fuck with me ever since. Just yeah. just to end the podcast because I'm a big dude on a food note. Mm, uh oh. Besides uh, bes- besides besides family. Yeah. The best pupusa in the Bay Area as a. As a man, uh, uh, as a born and raised oh, on Salvadorian, I don't know, okay, man. Out here, you, out here. You know what? Here. Okay, yeah, I'm, let's talk about out here. I, I, I'm gonna tell you this. I don't. He's I, gonna piss off a lot of people. I don't. I don't know because, <laughs> hey, like, like no shit. Like, I don't know because my mom, my aunts, like they make it so much on a regular, and it's so good that I don't have to go out to eat. Pork and cheese. But um, but I know I know there's um, I'm trying Jeez. to think of, I'm trying to think of the name of the this is new restaurant newer, it's on Mission in Cortland. I'm trying to think of the name. Blompier. No, La not no Sant- Blompier. It's called like La Santa Neca. Th- that was good too. Yeah, that's- Santa Neca. I fuck with Reynas. Uh, uh, I fuck with Reynas. I fuck with Reynas. <laughs> was cool, but um, I'm trying to think. I can look it up, but it, it's it, there's this, this is restaurant. They on, just opened. Not too long ago, yeah. It's it's on like, Mission, right off of Cortland. Uh, yeah. You know, we you know Santa Pizza. It's like two yeah. doors down from there. Uh, okay, but also there's yeah. another spot right here called uh, Monte Cristo. Is that on Persia? No, no. There's Persia. one on Third, and there's another one somewhere else. Monte but, Cristo. But yeah, they're they're good. They're good too. What? Yeah. yeah, but but my mom is like that's that that's queen though. That's you can't queen. beat home. You can't beat home. But you know what though? What you know what though? Like a lot of people will say, "Oh, my mom," but my mom is your mom's mom. Woo! So it's Damn. like all the people that I know that have tasted my mom's shit be like, but I gotta order twelve pack. Yeah, I get a twelve pack. I'm about to come back and bring y'all some. <laughs> Let me get a twelve pack of that. Yeah, man. Let's so it's do like, it. yeah. So my mom like she makes all that shit. So like growing up, she would never let us eat like fast I'm food, sorry. nothing. Mm. We'd be like, oh, we want some pizza. I'll make it. Yeah, I'll make, I'll, I'll I'll make I, I want a burger. Right. I'll make it. I want some Chinese food. I'll make it. Yeah. <laughs> she like, I want some lumpias. I'll make, I'll make it. it. <laughs> and my mom was funny because my mom used to work with a lot of Filipino chicks. So she learned how to make lumpias. And she used to make some bomb ass lumpias. Hey. To the point where fucking Filipino ladies was like, where you get this at? Like, my mom made it. <laughs> but she's not Filipino. And I'm like, you don't know. I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know. She learned the shit. <laughs> learned it. Yeah, hell yeah, man. Any, uh, j- just just to wrap it up, an hour in, it went like this, right? Man, I didn't even get in. It's, it's, it's it so went much. like this. You got to come back. It's so much. Back. I'll come back. It's just, back. I think for people that don't know the resume, man, it's just, it's just I've been a staple in the club game. And then oh, from, yeah, there it is. Oh, Let's go. That's they still of, open? <laughs> I don't know, man, but it's like, uh. I'm gonna find. A, I'm gonna look it up. The other one, it's on. It's on Mission and Cortland, right? In Cortland. There's a bar right there. It's, it's right by the bar. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of food followers that listen. They'd be like, every time we say something about food, they go there. I'm about, yeah. I'm about, I, th- I want to say it's like n- <laughs> Nenas or Nanita, something like so that. So if you say Monte Cristo, are the <laughs> listeners gonna go to Monte, Monte Cristo? Cristo. Like, <laughs> hey, the, the Monte Cristo. You know why it's affiliated with me? Because it's not. It's, it, people are gonna think it's biased, but it's it's really like uh, my cousin. Uh-oh. His dad is part owner of that shit. Shout out to family business. Support that shit. So we like, rock with family hey, business. Look, I'm, about, if it's good, look it's good. I'm about to tell you right now. I'm looking it up. Nenas Salvadorian. Hello. That's it. That's that one's Nenas. hell. That one is hella good. Any any N 
A. What do you get Apostrophe there? Apostrophe S. Like, like you just yeah. drop the in. The last third is right there. That first one. Yep. Yeah. That one. Go to that one's bomb as fuck. Hello. Right yeah, they, they better give me some commission. So they got so the last I went there right. So one matter of fact, yeah, that's it. Right by nine o'clock. They close at nine o'clock. We got time. Three, four, Shut five, shit down. Hey, what time is it? We got time. Shut, Shut this shit down. We got Shut one hour. <laughs> I will call in the order. It takes a minute. Shut this hey, shit down. Hey, trust me. I I've eaten there before, and and uh, the same cousin who I told you his dad is has Monte Cristo. Uh, that's his people that opened that. One of, his, one of his workers went and opened her own restaurant. Is, is, it, better, is it better than your mom's cooking? No, no, yes, it's, good it's, good it's, it's close though. Good it's answer. really, really close. Good answer. Good so, answer. so um, there was, it was last season they opened. It was just, they might have been open about a year or so. Uh, last season we were at the Niner game, and, and uh, I don't even know. If, I think we lost, and then. My cousin Pete doesn't matter. The, what shout matters this? Shout out to cousin Pete. <laughs> cousin so he, he says, "Hey man, you know." I said, "Where you at?" He goes, "Man, I'm over here in the city, but I'm over here with my dad. Come through at this restaurant." He gave me the address. We showed up. They got this platter. It's like a sample platter. It's fucking big as fuck. Hello. Sample and it's platter. and it's got like it's got it's got carne asada fries. Mm. It's got pupusas. What? It's got yuca. Oh, it oh. had it had. Everything on that My motherfucker. Mouth is watering. Yuka's yeah. like a potato, but it's not a potato, bitch. Yeah, yeah. So if you look <laughs> you at gotta it, you, try you it. find a platter. <laughs> it had it had hella shit on there, and I was like, God damn, oh dude, God. this shit is hella good. Hell yeah. Uh, and we picked out, and we got perking more than we already were. Ah. But that's that's yeah. official right there. That spot is official. Right. Shut this motherfucker down. We're going right now. Nana's. Down. Shout out to yeah, Nana's. Nana's. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Nana's. man. Any, 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 any uh, final words, my friend? Any, I mean, I anything you want to share with the universe? I mean, I didn't, I didn't even get into the. I didn't even get a chance to get into my resume, but no. You know. <laughs> I don't think you need to. That's, I don't think you need to. It was just pretty much. I just came but up. Come back. And came, we'll I do. just pretty much came up in the game, uh, late uh-huh. '90s, early 2000s. Um, First DJ that got voted on to be a. Uh, uh, Summer Jam Summer Jam DJ yeah, Hello they, Oh yeah get back to that 2010 they had uh, 66 DJs compete You yeah. vote for your favorite uh, mix And I ended up winning So I opened up Summer Jam And um, Who was the headliner that, that year Shit who was the headliner that year uh, it, might, it might have been Drake yeah. It might have been Drake Drizzle I think it was Drake For yeah. sure that I remember that year though It was when Miguel was brand new he, oh, the okay, Miguel, yeah, yeah, Miguel, was, yeah. he was dope, and I, I, I before he kicked the girl in the head. Yeah, oh. before that, <laughs> things it, happened. It before he even had a beard, he had no facial oh, hair. Yeah, yeah, it was back baby then. face. So I seen him backstage, and nobody knew him, but I knew who he was. So I went up to him, I was like, "Yo, man, your shit is dope." Yeah, he, he, he was like, "Oh, thank you very much, thank you." Very much. And he was like, "Remember me?" He had a white up. guitar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, but he's dope. He, yeah, no, he, he's Miguel's dope. Now. Yeah, so then uh, after that. They didn't have it the next year. The following year, 2012, they had it again. I, I was informed I couldn't participate because I had won the previous one. Overvotes. And then, and then, and then my brother entered and he won. Shout out to there DJ Mo one, man. And that's, that's the only two they've ever done. And so we got the, we can say we're the only Take two that ever win. Yeah, yeah. It's a family thing. Yeah, it's a family thing. But you know, other than that, it's just I just I just made my name in the bay and I just took it. Outside the outside bay. the bay, and you I, have to work outside the bay to, to get your yeah, money. Yeah, so I ended, I, I ended up touring with a lot of people and doing a lot of war shows and a lot of celebrity stuff. So I built a lot of relationships. So that kind of led into the tailgate this last year. Mm. And uh, you know, we we're, we're just doing trying to uh, do something different, and uh, we ended up getting a little easy. E was the first artist, that right? We, then we got Money B from Digital Underground, right? And then this last week we had ended up getting RBL Posse. Right. Hello, and they tore that shit down. Hello, right? They tore that shit down. Come on, bro. How, Hell yeah. how can they get get in touch with you to to buy some of the product? To oh yeah, I got the NWA Niners with attitude. Yeah, uh, gear. He blessed us with some gear too. Yeah, he, yeah, he, of came, he came through and oh yeah, we'll take some pictures with it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. it's a uh, um, if you're on Instagram, there's two there's two handles on it. The first one is uh the original NWA. Woo! The original NWA. And the only reason I'm doing that is because this it's a biter in, in Southern California who started it like like a year or two ago trying to bite. Uh, the Niners with Attitude thing? Yeah, yeah. Wah, but, wah, but it's like, from it's, SoCal? It's, but it, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's some phony shit. But the phony other, baloney. Yeah, the other site. The other one is uh, <laughs> Double Impact. And that's both on Instagram. What? Double Impact. Yep, yep. John Claude Van Damme. Yeah, Van right? yeah, Damme. And, and, and my personal, my personal handle is DJ Juice One. Just you know, DJ J U I C E number one. Not two. 
Not, not two. Just, just one. one. The one. only one. What's Mo's? Uh, DJ Mo one. Same thing. M O E one. Number yeah. one. DJ M O E one. You know, and we're together. We're double impact. So you can hell yeah. You can find us on either one of those. And but I have, Dragon. I have the NWA gear. It's on the link in the bio. And then, you, you know, got it. You know, just come rock with us. Is is popping this year and. uh yeah, our tailgate's, our, our tailgate's been popping, and yes, uh, it is. you know this this uh, I'm, I'm I can say this now because the this podcast will probably air after the NFC Championship, so it won't matter. But um, our, so this is exclusive. <laughs> so no uh, shit. So then um, juice, you know, juice. So, so we had we had uh, RBL Posse come rock the last tailgate, right? Ah. And then they had such a good time that they're coming back. Ooh. This Sunday? Yeah, but they're not they're not gonna perform. No. They're just gonna come kick it. We want yeah, they, they wanna be in the work. Building. Yeah, they, they had a good ass time and they're gonna bring back they they brought back merchandise and they sold a good amount. So they were just happy because it, it is. Was, because I it bet, was just I safe. Bet it you was forty dollars they're gonna perform. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. After, after eating and drinking. Yeah, they, yeah. So so Black Sea was like blood. All my squad, they they sprung, they wanna come back. <laughs> they sprung. I'll show you the text. They he, oh, he come, so I they see. so they coming back. They coming back and we're just gonna kick it. So they're gonna be there at this tailgate, but by the time you hear this, it'll be over. <laughs> DJ Juice. Yes, sir. Industry OG. Yes, sir. Thank you. A real homie, hey, man. Hey, Been rocking hey, with hey. us. Free 99 Podcast. Be sure to follow us. SoundCloud, iTunes, YouTube, iHeartRadio, Spotify, FRE99 Podcast. Shout out to DJ Juice, Mono, Good Homie Gus, Philly Phil. Hello. Go Niners, baby.